Hey guys, giving away a switch on my channel this month and in November, make sure you like, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment on the video because the comment is what gets you an entry into the competition. Claytano, my boy, is giving away a PS4 on his channel, so you can go and do the same thing over there and have another chance to win a console this month. So this video, I'm sorry I haven't published things for a while, guys. You may have been watching or you may have heard about the Auto Chess Invitational, which was essentially the Auto Chess World Championships. I was invited to fly out to China to commentate. And unfortunately, uh, I have had real issues uploading my content from China because, as you know, that YouTube is blocked. Um, so using a VPN, everything was really slow. What I wanted to do, though, is now that we've finished, I can congratulate Jinsu from South Korea for getting the $450,000 prize. Um, if you remember Shred Shredded Puzzle, he was invited as a player, as a content creator. He ended up getting fourth and got $50,000, so massive congratulations to him. But what I wanted to do was focus on four of the best builds that Jinsu played, our number one player in the world, and also some builds from the finals that were really good. This is Dragon Six Mage. You may have seen it featured a lot. Uh, one of the surprising things about this is although this is a classic dragon mage build right here um storm shaman came in a lot at level nine to make sure they had counters to other mage comps something that really surprised me was how flexible people made this build be you can see Jinsu running this build here where he ended up coming second to Kong. Um, I believe this was in the second game of the entire series where he ran God of War 3 as his sole tank. So he didn't end up running the Pirate Captain that is the usual uh, Dragon Mage edition. He ended up running the God of War. And something that also came out of the East Asian region, specifically from Japan and South Korea, was the inclusion of Water Spirit which was a really, really cool addition to a lot of these six mage builds because it was really tanky when given items, and it also became uh, a very heavy damage dealer. So six mages and dragons, as you can see, if you want to go back and look at the ideal six dragon mage comp, um, you can have a look at uh, how that's supposed to work. But this was an, an incredibly strong composition in the world finals, and um, I definitely think you guys should play this on ladder uh, until we get some of the changes coming through with the wizards int being introduced. But this was an incredibly strong build. So that was one of the major builds that we saw pretty much in every game. The second build that I want to look at is good old Glacier Knight. If I had to pick one build from the World Championship that was the most popular build pretty much across the board. Now we had some people do really badly with it, but we also had a lot of people do really well with it. I think it was maybe one of the most consistent builds to hit the top three in the entire competition. Something that I've been pushing to you guys for the last few weeks. Glacier Knight is definitely that build. Now, I know on your version of the game that you're playing right now, it did recently get nerfed ever so slightly, 3% on the shield generation for four knights, but it is still an incredibly strong build. Lightblade Knight and Hell Knight at level three are borderline broken, and this build, once it gets its items, becomes absolutely insane, and it has infinite scaling with items as well. It is one of the most popular builds in the game for a reason. It was the most con one of the most contested builders in, um, in the game for a reason, and there was even a player, a Chinese player called Lucky, and she was the only female competitor at the tournament, but her strategy, which got her to the semi-finals, was open four into Glacier Knight every single game. And it got her a few points away from the finals. She was very close to uh, getting to the finals. So I want to show you here. Um, this is another match of Jinsu playing the traditional Dragon Mage with a level 3 Tortola Elder and a level 3 um, Storm Shaman, by the way. He's playing the traditional um, uh, Dragon Mage comp. And he's playing up against Shredded Puzzle, who ran Glacier Knights. He ended up open forting into Glacier Knights almost every game too. Now he came second here, just showing you the power of this 6 Mage composition. But uh, yeah, this is um, Shredded playing a build that was probably the most popular in this entire tournament. I kind of wanted to do multiple looks at the Glacier Knight comp because it was just so strong. Um, I want to show you another clip after this of uh, people using it more. Unfortunately, it can be a little bit RNG versus the mages because if you don't get the shields at the right time, you're obviously just not going to survive. And you can see Shredded got second place here versus Jinsu running that six mage um, dragon build. This is again focusing on Jinsu. This time he came top three with that Glacier Knight build, actually knocking Shredded out in fourth, who was running the same thing. And again, this is something that Jinsu also ran. He didn't run it from an open fort strategy. He actually ran it from, I believe, like a sort of a middling, a middling game. I think he was win streaking for a long time at the start of the game. But again, it's something that he also used to pilot to the first place position, $450,000 that he won 
just off the back of being so varied with his builds as well. He wasn't like Lucky or Shredded where he forced the same build over and over again. He actually was so varied with what he chose. And now Shredded was really happy with fourth place and he played amazingly. But, you know, for, for, for to really level up to get to the next level, about that flexibility is what Jinsu had. Jinsu played loads and loads and loads of different compositions through this tournament. And Glacier Knight was just one of the compositions that he ended up playing and obviously piloted him really well. Okay, moving on to the next build that I want to focus on after Glacier Knights, it was Beast Warrior. It's something that I think um, was a little bit fringe in the World Championship. I think it maybe should have been better, but a lot of people weren't confident playing this in the current meta. Um... The builds were super variable. One of the things about Beast Warrior is it's a very adaptable build. The warriors can be kind of interchangeable. For instance, I don't even really like Swordman in Beast Warrior, but it was featuring quite heavily because of how powerful it is in the early game. Um, but this was a build that a lot of people actually ended up using and coming first with because they did so much damage to people in the mid game. One of the good things about Beast Warrior is that you can go Poisonous Worm if you get a Magic Crystal early on, and then you can swap that out for something like Razor Claw in the late game because uh, Poisonous Worm tends to drop off a little bit unless you've got like a Refresher Orb or you've just got loads of mana generation on it. Uh, swapping out for a 3-star Razor Claw can be really powerful in the late game. So Beast Warrior was something especially the Chinese players played incredibly well, and it allowed them to get a... like really solid lead in their semi-finals in their finals by playing a build that not many other people were contesting because honestly hunters glacier knights and dragon mages were like the most contested builds the reason i don't have hunters in this video is because they were actually the most inconsistent build and i think that's something that we notice on ladder as well is that hunters can be incredibly inconsistent so you're watching a video here of where Jinsu was playing up against Land, the other South Korean player. Land was in a really strong late game position with these really intense six mage comps, which you know you you might notice are featuring a lot at the top end of the table. Um, so yeah, I think um, I think Beast Warrior was an incredibly strong build, and Jinsu, whilst he his his team wasn't, I think as strong as what we're seeing here from Land, it got him to second spot spot. And that is good enough, given he he just needed to consistently place in the top three. Remember, this is all all clips from the finals. These clips came from the finals. Um, and Jinsu was constantly playing in the top three, constantly varying his builds. And this was a Beast Warrior build that made it to the top two versus what is, is arguably one of the strongest builds in the meta. Also, take note of the three-star Water Spirit piloted by Land. It was an incredibly intelligent pickup for a lot of these six mage compositions. The next comp that I want to take a look at is something that we overlooked quite a lot in the tournament, which was Feathered Hunter. Uh, something that I think I wanted to focus on was kind of like why this build actually ended up doing well towards the end of the tournament. That's because most people were open forting into Feathered Hunter before, but open forting is a build that needs you to basically get a super strong and stable build. And and I think Glacier, uh, Glacier Knight is the strongest and most stable build out there right now. So people couldn't really do it into Feathered because it had a lot of bad matchups. But Feathered became more apparently good throughout the tournament because we saw a lot more Glacier Knight than we were maybe thinking and a lot of Beast Warrior more so than we were thinking as well. And Feathered does well versus both of those in the mid game. And you also have Shining Assassin and the Marine bonus that you can slot in to help versus the mage players. So we saw this from a lot of the Chinese players, but very few people open forted into it. We actually uh, saw a lot more people play it straight out of the gates, um, especially if you manage to find Warpwood Sage early and get to a Warpwood Sage 3. That was one of the most important things that we saw happen with this build. And I want you to see the final moments of the final game of the tournament where Archdevil managed to secure himself second place and $200,000 by getting first over Seiko, who was running a Beast Warrior build. It's actually a really, really strong build. I thoroughly recommend that you don't overlook this. It's something that has fallen out of meta because of the feathered nerf, but it is still very strong as long as you get your three-star pieces online in the mid-game. Then invest into levels and look to add more strength to your composition through Razor Claw, through uh, the Marine bonus if you're versus mages. It's generally just a really, really, really good build. So yeah, I think this is the final build that I wanted to focus on. I, I think it's the most consistent hunter build out there. I think it's more consistent than regular hunter and more consistent than the what, what we used to call the number one Asian build. I think that uh, Feathered Hunter in general is better than both of those builds combined. So that's Archdevil here beating out Psycho. Psycho on a small amount of HP, but the Feathered Hunter build getting the work done. Really impressive stuff from all of our players. I'm so happy that I got to cast this event. It's been one of the, the sort of the best things I've ever done in my life. So I'm really happy that we got to see a load of really cool builds as well.